How's everything been coming along? Um, it's going really good, actually. I'm really enjoying the schedule. Um, I enjoy having guidance and my studying, so I'm loving it so far. Awesome. I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, what would you say is the biggest challenge you're facing right now? I would say it would be with reading comprehension. Um, I think my biggest issue is honestly understanding everything. Um, I feel a lot of pressure to gain insight into a long text, especially when they're comparative. I think it's really difficult for me to understand everything <clears throat> and then approach the questions, but I'm barely getting into it right now, into the schedule for reading comprehension, and I'm getting a lot of good tips from you. Like I've never heard about uh, doing global, then local, then inference. So that was something I was thinking about trying out from here on out when I start when I start doing reading comprehension. Great, awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Sounds like there's some game changing advice for you in there about changing up your approach. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm enjoying it. Cool. I'm glad to hear it. Any particular questions that you could use support with? Um, I did want to ask you about reading comprehension. Um, do you think there's anything else I could implement going forward since I'm just getting started? Check out all the master classes and deep dives inside the course. Aside from the foundational reading comp material, I've got live class recordings covering more advanced techniques. And so look at those if you're looking for more. For example, I did a deep dive recently where I spent an entire hour just talking about one passage and a couple of the global questions, that's it. So we really go in depth, word by word, sentence by sentence, line by line. And so we're doing another one tomorrow mm -hmm. night. And so you could attend that one live, but you could also catch the recordings as well. Got it, yes, yes, I saw that. So I'm gonna be joining that for sure. Fantastic, excellent. Okay. So that's where you'll see more advanced material and just going more in depth on real everything really. Okay, perfect, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I also had another question for you, Steve. So I have actually taken quite a few of the recent practice tests. So what do you recommend for somebody like me who's already taken so many and they were the recent ones? What do you recommend in the next five weeks? Well, figure out exactly which ones you haven't done out of the most recent. So recent being 70s and 80s right now. Mm -hmm. Are there any you haven't done? make those your full length exams that best uh, give you that best estimate of where you currently stand in terms of your aptitude. And then uh, the older ones are good practice too, though. I mean, the raw score conversions may be a little different, but with the flex, all the raw scores are kind of messed up anyway. And so anything you haven't seen before would be good fresh material to work on. And then the stuff you have done, that's still good practice too, because unless you would get a 180 on it, doing it again, there's probably still something to be learned there. Okay, so it would be okay for me to redo them? Yeah, totally fine. Okay. You can still learn a lot from that material too. Okay. Um, and then since, since right now it's flex version and it's only three sections, do you recommend that I take it as a flex? So, um, so pretty much take it as a flex and then add a section or should I just kind of take it as, because I know that you promote when it's, you know, when everything was, was normal adding a section to the five section test. So would you recommend doing like a four section test or what do you recommend right now for, for the flex situation? Yeah, you could okay. occasionally do a four section exam to work on your endurance a little bit, but you know that it's gonna be three sections on test day. So I would do most of your exams like it'll be on the actual day. You know, November's a flex, so do three sections mainly. Okay, good to know. And then for... Logic games, I actually feel really good about. I feel like my approach is pretty solid. Um, but logical re reasoning, sorry. It's one of those sections that I feel really, I feel good about it. I feel like I understand almost everything. Um, obviously you get hit with the hard questions and they're more difficult to understand, but I take your advice, I review. I really try to have a deep dive with each question I get wrong and, and just run with that. Um, but I find it really hard when I'm testing. I feel a lot of pressure to get them all done. So I don't even get to all of them. And then um, it's just so much pressure. So I don't know, because when I blind review, 
I actually feel really good about it. I'll go back and do the ones I never got to. And I was like, wow, I wish I would have gotten to these. Like they were fine. Like I would have gotten them. But I think it's just like the pressure gets to me. I start asking myself, oh my God, I've spent more than two minutes on this one. So um, what would you recommend? Because I feel confident about it when I'm not in test mode, but the moment I get in test mode, it becomes a really big like pressure issue for me. Yeah. Great question. The first thing I would say is do more practice tests to make it so that test day is like just another dry run. And so the more time to exposure you can get, the more you'll build up your tolerance of being under those conditions. And then I would also recommend mindfulness meditation. Have you ever tried anything like that? Yeah. So, um, watching your videos, um, you talk a lot about, uh, meditating. And I feel like I hear that, but I'm always like, ah, I don't need it. But I decided that I should give it a try. And so I've been doing it for maybe like a week now. And I feel like it's helpful. I feel like it gets me in a, in a certain mood, just kind of like, it kind of just erases everything that's going on. And it just gets me like in the zone. So yes, I'm, I'm working on that. <laughs> awesome. So even just a few minutes a day between now and the test could make a big difference over time to help with the nerves and help you let go of a previous question and stay focused only on the task at hand, especially in logical reasoning where they really are bite-sized. What happened in number 16 doesn't need to affect what happens in number 17, but your memory will still color it potentially. And so being able to have the willpower and the focus to let go of what happened before and just focus solely on the task in front of you is really how it relates there and why it's important. So I, I would try implementing that. Okay. Okay. And I actually really loved something you said in one of your videos, you talked about um, gaining a momentum when you're in LR and that if you get to a hard question, you don't let it stump you. So the second you realize, okay, this is a complicated question, or like you say, like sometimes it's parallel and it's like further down the line. So it's like maybe in the twenties. So you automatically maybe skip it because you know, it's going to take you a little longer so I thought that was so helpful to think of taking the test as sort of like a, not, not a race, but you know, like a slow and steady, you, you keep your confidence and you keep going. So that's something I felt was super helpful. And I'm going to implement that like 100% into my LR. Awesome. I'm really glad to hear Denise. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you know what to do. It sounds like. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um. Okay. And then um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the difference between a personal statement and a diversity statement and how, how those should be different and how different they should be. Do they need to complement each other? I wanted some insights on that. Yeah. Great question. I actually have some lessons on this in the course. I have a whole section devoted to admissions and personal statements, diversity statements. I actually run application essay workshops inside the course. And so you could submit a draft and we'll go over it together in class. You'll get support from me as well as support from others. And by default, I have students submit them anonymously to help you get more honest feedback. And so it's a really fun space to play. I've done like a half dozen or so of them at least. And so I'll do another one soon. And so you could submit your drafts. And I also talk about admissions, a personal statement versus diversity statement. Short answer is there's not necessarily a huge difference between them other than of course, diversity statement should cover something diverse in nature, broadly speaking. Whereas personal statement, you have a bit more flexibility and freedom regarding what would be appropriate to cover there. And PS is also longer than diversity statement, typically. Got it. Okay. Okay. But I shouldn't be addressing, um, I shouldn't be like restating something that I said in my personal statement and my diversity, or is that okay? If it were a brief reference, that's fine. But I wouldn't repeat the same exact topic. I would use the opportunity to make it something different. Okay. So I think the only other thing I wanted to ask you was, I think we have a coaching call tonight. Correct. Yeah. So tonight at 9 PM Eastern. Okay. So how, how do I prepare for that? What does it usually consist of? Is there a question asking or is it just the topic that you're teaching? Um, like what can I do to just prepare for the coaching call? There's nothing you need to do in advance. You can just show up. I have the recordings of all the previous ones inside the course. So you'll see what they're like. And of course, the most recent one's the best reflection of how it's evolved over time. And lately we've been playing with student presentations. And so I'll handpick a couple of students or they'll approach me and ask to be featured. And basically I give them the floor to present on anything they would like. Could be an LSAT question type, 
could be an LSAT review process, could be an LSAT strategy, and then they get feedback from me and others. Ooh. That's a lot of fun. We've been playing with different formats and this is my new favorite and we've done it the past few times. And so look at the one from two weeks ago and you'll see what it's like. Okay, perfect. I'll take a look. Um, and then about the personal statements, how do I know when you will be um, featuring them and you're going to make a video about it? Yeah, sure. So the very first activity in the course is the list of upcoming classes. So you can see, aside from the email notifications, I list everything there. Okay. And so you can see when the next one will be. I think we're doing an application essay workshop next week. And so if you submit your draft to me within at least a few days prior, then I'll be able to add to the agenda and we'll probably be able to cover it that evening. Oh, perfect. Okay. I think those are all my questions. Awesome, Denise. Well, it was great to have the chance to connect with you and I'll look forward to seeing you in class soon. Okay. Thank you so much, Steve. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, of course. Take care. Take care. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.